What's up y'all, it's Mike from All American Reviews and today I'm taking y'all out of the office and we're going on a West Coast trip across America to Montrose, Colorado to visit a couple of amazing companies that are building all of their products right here in the USA. I've been following both of these companies for a couple of years now and couldn't be more excited, so let's get going. up y'all we have made it to Montrose Colorado and the beard is looking rough from wearing a mask on the plane we're just gonna do it live pretty cool little town here it's like 20,000 people got started as an old mining supply town much like a lot of other towns in this region of the country but is actually a sneaky hot spot for outdoor gear manufacturing so there's a bunch of awesome companies uh, in this city one of them seek outside you got long haul folding kayaks uh, and some fly fishing rod companies. There's uh, alpaca rafts that's here as well. Tons of awesome companies that are manufacturing all their products in the USA. But I'm here to see two in particular. So tomorrow I'm taking y'all on a behind the scenes tour of Som Footwear, and then we're hitting Ross Reels the next day. So anyways, super excited. I'm gonna go get cleaned up and get some shut eye and I will see y'all tomorrow. Alrighty y'all, got our coffee, got a little breakfast sandwich from a little local joint, and we are rolling over to Som Footwear. So I've been wearing these shoes for a while now, and honestly, I absolutely love them. They're one of my go-to pairs, and so I'm super excited for y'all to see them. Let's go. Hey y'all, I'm here with Ollie from Som Footwear. We're out here in Montrose, Colorado and gonna give y'all a, a behind the scenes tour of Som Footwear. So Ollie, I'd love for you to introduce yourself and maybe give us a little bit of the history behind Som Footwear. Yeah, well, thanks Mike. Uh, so I'm Ollie Marshall and um, the history of Som Footwear, uh, we started in, two, uh, the idea came in 2011 when I experienced um, a lot of back pain and back pain and I used to run a lot. I still run a lot, but uh, back then way more. Every time we go for a run, I had back pain the next day. And uh, it took me a while, but eventually I found out that the pain was caused by the shoes I was wearing, the running shoes or the cushioning or that stuff. And um, a friend of mine told me about this book, Born to Run, mm -hmm. but this guy running barefoot with like a minimal, uh, 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 like just a piece of rubber under their feet to protect their feet from, from rocks and stuff. So I read the book, pretty interesting. I said, but you can't run barefoot, you know. But sure enough, one day I tried. I took off my shoes, nobody looked me and look, look, <laughs> nobody could see me. I took off the, my shoes and then I started running. I was like, wow, wow, that's all you need. Just your feet, that was amazing. It took me 100 yards and I was yeah. hooked. Yeah, and then I started to look for shoes on the market that with like the minimal uh, support. That was kind of, uh, there was a few out there, but not something I liked. So, mm -hmm. so basically one morning I woke up and I said, hmm, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's how I always started. That's great. Uh, and it's just blossomed into such an awesome company. Uh, just walking through y'all's facility, we're going to give y'all a walking tour here in just a minute, uh, taking a look at how it goes from start to finish. Just congratulations on everything that you've built well, so thanks. far. Uh, mm -hmm. It is really, really cool. And honestly, I was telling uh, our viewers, one of my favorite pairs of shoes that I wear so often. Um, <laughs> and so uh, they're great. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Thanks. Awesome. Well, should we do a little walking tour of the facility and sure. show everybody how things are made? Sounds great. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So basically, the the first step is to uh, to cut the, the material. So we have different different material we use, like go from mesh to um, polyester to TPU film. 
and um, we cut all our different parts with these machines here. So everything is controlled by this computer. And uh, so in here we have all the different uh, model of shoes, all the different model by name, and then we pick the, if you need to cut like a size six or seven, just click on it and it shows. And this connected, it's directly connected to this machine here. Yep, and it, it, it cuts um, all the different parts. So I can show you that this is ready for the next step. So in here I got a size 10 in uh, our neutral air in red. So I got here the tongs, you got the TPU film, that's the band around the foot, that's the heel, the mesh has a liner, and we have a mesh that goes on the outside. This is a different like a, like a toe puff like for a light reinforcement on the toe etc and when this is ready it goes to over there where we have this uh, this is a heat press mm -hmm. so some of the TPU and material that get uh, are glued like heat pressed right uh, glued and that's what Carmen's doing so Gonna show us how it works. So she just places all the different part on the shoe upper. And she's almost ready. And then she pushes the tray into the machine, and there's a big, a big metal plate uh, set at 162 degrees Celsius. She presses the whole thing for about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and that's what. Uh, um, that's how we attach the TPU film and all Got the components of the shoes. So once this step is done, it goes to the other room, to the seamstresses, and Carmen is one of our seamstress. And this is Grima, our head hey, seamstress. I'm like... She's the best seamstress in the world, by the way. And they... Yes. And Grima do the, the required stitching. So there's like a, a reinforcement stitch on the lace band here. And then she's gonna do the, the attachment on the heel. So I touch the tongue, and uh, this is our uh, struggling machine. So that's a common thing in the shoe industry. That's how we stitch the the midsole here. Okay. So most of the uh, uh, sporting shoes are done that way. Mm -hmm. So that makes a, a very flexible shoe. This shoe is now ready to be uh, lasted, and the next step is to attach the the outsole. So I'm going to show you how we do that. This is our last. So that's the, the final shape of our shoes. Without that, we can't really attach the sole. I mean, right. there's company who don't use that, but not, not many. I think it's a it's good way to go. And, uh, so the first thing you can see, we have like a very sophisticated steamer. Mm -hmm. Which works great. <laughs> it's, just, it's, water. Yeah, it's very simple. It looks like my turkey fryer at home. That's that exactly is awesome. what it is. But it works, it works great. <laughs> so that would be the steam. We soften up the material and uh, so you put the. And then it, it slides the, the upper over the, the last. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's. So when they're ready, the shoes are what we call lasted. Mm -hmm. So the next step is to uh, put the laces. I think those shoes over there are ready. So this is what we call a flash activator. So it just heats. What activates the glue, it's mm -hmm. heat. So we put the, the upper in here, the sole in there, and for about, <clears throat> I'd say 20 seconds, till it reach a temperature of 170 degrees-ish. And then <clears throat> this, there's just like an infrared lamp under this here, which flash heat the, the sole about wow. for 10 seconds yeah and then we apply the sole by hand like this and we have about a, a minute so it's not like a contact cement mm -hmm. you can you can there's some yeah, play adjusted yeah. it after exactly. you initially placed it yeah and then it goes into this press which is called a pillow press and all those finger blocks here presses the shoe mm -hmm. press the shoe all, from the top all around and uh, for about 30 seconds and and then that's how the sole's attached that's great.
<laughs> love it. Now you know all the secrets. <laughs> and it. oh, and another good thing, we, we resold our shoes. Yep. So these, these are a, a, sold, a shoes that like a, a, a customer sent back yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to... Um, to get the new, a brand new sole, so it, I think that's something that's so unique uh, about y'all set up is that you actually can take uh, customers' existing shoes yeah. and resole them. Mm -hmm. um, we remove the old sole and put yeah. the new one on. I think it's important for the environment and try to to double the lifespan of our shoes. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's just instead of throwing them away to the landfill, I mean, it's it, it matters. I think yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Cool. Well, Ali, thank you so much for the walking tour of how Psalm Footwear is made from start to finish. Mm -hmm. That process is so uh, high quality and high touch, uh, and you have some amazing people who are hand stitching everything, and such a cool process just seeing it from start to finish. Well, thanks. Yeah, we have a good team. Yeah, definitely a great team. So, uh, why don't you, you guys introduce yourselves and uh, would love to uh, just kind of talk about Psalm, uh, y'all's products and where Psalm is headed going forward. My name is Natalie. I'm the CFO of, of Psalm Footwear. Um, and uh, what can I say? <laughs> you wear many hats. Yeah. And yeah. this is Michael. And I'm Michael. <laughs> I do a lot of customer service, answering emails, um, online content, blogs, newsletters, um, website, media, um, social media. Um, yeah, connecting to the customer and all the avenues that are out there. Um, Great. Well, Ali gave us, uh, like I said, a walking tour of the entire facility. I know a lot of our readers and viewers are familiar with some of your products, but why don't y'all tell us a little bit about maybe some of your best-selling stuff, some of your most popular footwear, and what customers really love about some footwear. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we hear first and foremost a lot of customers love that they're made in America, that they want to support you know, made in America companies. Um, and we're really honored that we're able to provide that for them. Um, and we're, you know, we're doing all that we can to make people feel as comfortable in their footwear as possible and to get out there and be active, um, you know, whether it's just going on walks or hiking or going to the gym. Um, we just want people to move and we want them to feel as comfortable when they do it and we believe that comes from being as natural as possible. Um, our Norwood classics are really popular for kind of indoor office more dressy kind of occasions mm -hmm. um, but we also have a lot of active um, footwear that has different degrees of materials used um, for more kind of rugged um, get them wet, get them muddy kind of activities, uh, others um, more in the gym, um, mesh that provides a lot more flexibility and breathability um, when doing those kind of high intense workouts. Uh, Seven is our youngest customer. He's actually older now, but he, the first time he came he was seven. <laughs> And uh, we have 94 reported that wear our sums. So it's kind of interesting how many people we, uh, we can serve. And it's not just a young man active, mm -hmm. it's any kind of people that walk the dogs, wants their feet to be back to where they were when they were in their 20s. Or you have the young mom that says, I don't want my kids to have problems with their feet. So I want them to wear sums, and all my kids have sums in the house. And so it's kind of interesting how we can serve any kind of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned that uh, being made in the USA is a one of the things that your customers really love about Psalm footwear. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, your decision to make everything locally and just be super high touch with your manufacturing process and really what made in the USA means to y'all? Well, I think it's important because <clears throat> almost everything is made overseas and uh, the US used to be like a big, big, big 
uh, manufacturer for sh footwear and many other things back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And um, it's important to employ local people. It's important for our community. It's important for the environment. On day one, we could have gone to Asia. It would have been maybe easier mm -hmm. in some certain ways. Um, when Ali got his idea of, oh, I have an idea for a shoe, maybe a factory would do it. And no factory takes an idea because they're not set to make uh, another shoes that they already have. I mean, they're not making another shoe. It's difficult to be set up for that. So by being um, adventurous and a little bit innocent, Ali said, I can learn, I can learn how to do this. And so it was not easy, but it was the right choice. And our customers thanks us every day. Not easy could... to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> it's still an adventure. The, the first three years were just a giant roller coaster. First. Oh yeah. Up, the first down, ones. Upside down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every day we had an, yeah. an, an excuse to say, oh, let's forget about this. But yeah, we know we persevere, and and it's important to to remind ourselves how far we came from, because at the beginning we couldn't get. Um, material, I mean, equipment that was doing, we had to be creative. Mm -hmm. Ali has that, he said, okay, if I don't have that machine, how can I make it happen? And the shoes looked like they used, <laughs> I mean, they looked like they, they, they were um, clown shoes at the beginning, but... <laughs> Ali showed me one of the first pairs. I mean, it's actually right here, let it go. Yeah. I mean, this was the first a uh, pair of uh, some footwear shoes right yeah, there. Look, it's a high tech. Got a Velcro to keep it closed and stuff. <laughs> like some cork and sole and uh, mesh, very breathable. Yeah, uh, yeah but they, they, those don't sell very well. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we still have few customers from the first yeah. years, mm -hmm. um, and many came back a few years later and said what about the yellow shoes we don't have it anymore and we said no we don't <laughs> oh you should have them okay we can maybe return on those but anyway so it was we, we signed up for a race in Pogosa Springs mm -hmm. that's about three hours away from here it was like a 50k on a trail run and I, I wore those <laughs> <laughs> at the very very first summer and we were looking at those guys those other runners would pass me did you make those shoes? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. You finish it. I finished the race. I didn't win, but I finished the race. Yeah. Well, that first and summer, great, great, yeah. it was five marathons you did uh -huh. in those shoes. Yeah. It worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we made some improvements. I we need to show something better because. <laughs> Well, we're all showing them off right now uh, because all of us have some footwear shoes. We made, we made some progress. <laughs> we made some improvement. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's amazing. really, it's really great when someone calls in to ask a question about an order. We don't have to walk far to see where it is in the process. Everything is right here. So no matter where it is, we can track it. We can. Um, change things we can we have so much control because it all happens under one roof um, yeah. and when customers come in at first they're a little unsure when they walk in because they're is this a, a store is this the some store and it's like <laughs> well it's everything it's the store it's the factory it's it's, it's just it. one big collection so and you know we can give tours that people you know have never seen a shoe factory before and it's it's you know a really unique you know, not just to Montrose, but you know, to Colorado, or there's not many out there. So it's kind of a treat when people are able to, you know, walk around and see these things. We don't often think at times, well, what does it take to make a shoe? We wear shoes, but what goes into it? And it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's always neat to be able to, you know, welcome people and, you know, show them the process and, you know, answer those questions. And it just, it, it, it helps, you know, that curiosity that people have and being able to kind of feed that and, and you know, it's really meaningful to, you know. And what is fun is when people say, I'm coming to, to Colorado this date, 
and I'm making a detour just to see your factory. And so, okay, we'll be here for you. And they come here and of course, um, you know, I don't know. They just fall in love with yeah. the fact how you make sh shoes. I mean, yeah. it's interesting. So, so Michael, are you uh, looking at all the customer feedback and seeing, oh, these are the features that people want or, oh, this color, or this style would be really cool. And then just kind of feeding that information to Natalie and Ali. Yeah, it really helps because we're always having brainstorming sessions, always trying to, you know, incorporate the feedback that we get, you know, what can we actually do? How can we kind of refine it um, to fit? Um, just giving customers, you know, so much of what we produce is about just kind of, you know, expressing life, you know, going out and appreciating life and the energy that comes from that. And we want to, that to be seen in the products that we're coming out with, to always have kind of new colors or new designs or new features. Um, just to keep things, you know, moving and evolving and exciting. Um, so whether it's kind of the house the soles or certain colors or um, certain shapes that we hear from customers, it's trying to like, you know, how can we make that? How, how can we turn that into something that, you know, will not just work for one person, but, you know, there's a community that's calling for this kind of thing and how can we, you know, reach as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, that's very important to always stay engaged, always kind of get that back and forth, um, just to know that, you know, we want to hear back from them and we're excited when we see photos of their adventures, um, yeah. their stories of how, you know, wearing the shoes for a couple weeks suddenly, wow, I, I've, I've lost my foot pain or I'm able to, you know, walk so much further than I could before. Or, it, you know, those stories really touch us. So, you know, we like to hear back because um, when the shoes go, we're kind of, we're sad to see every box go. We're like, I hope you, you're on an adventure. I hope you, you know, have a great time on, you know, on the feet that you end up on. I hope they take you lots of new places. So every it's, pair has a story. Yeah, it's always great to, to hear those stories and, you know, and be able to share them and, you know, put them on our website and all that kind of stuff to just kind of, you know, we want SOM as kind of all of us. It's not just the ones that make the shoes, but those that wear it too. You know, we're all a big community together and, you know, we just want to grow and, and share and, you know, get out there and, you know, explore as much as possible, so. Well, thank you all so much for this behind the scenes look at Psalm Footwear. Y'all clearly have a ton of care that goes into each and every pair of Psalm Footwear shoes. And I know our readers and viewers really appreciate just the behind the scenes look. So once again, this is Mike from All American Reviews. This is Michael from Psalm Footwear. Natalie from Psalm Footwear. And Oli for some footwear. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you like this style of video, you want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for supporting your country and shopping American-made. See you all next time.